All right, first we're going to want to unzip or decompress the file that we just downloaded. You can double click on it or right click and use your computer's built-in utility for this. Once this is finished, open up the folder and double click on gram.exe. That's your spectrogram. Next, we're going to change a few settings to customize it to our specific needs. Click on File and select Scan Input from the drop-down menu. Most of these settings will already be as we need them, but we are going to go to FFT Size and select 4096 and change the frequency resolution to 6.5. Then just choose OK. Next, go up to Pointers. Select it and select the white cross and then back to pointers and choose frequency mark. We're going to set some guides here to show us where we want to keep our voice during practice. Marker 1 will be set at 175 and marker 2 will be set at 220 Hz. Then just choose OK. If your microphone is connected and functioning properly, you should see something like this. The lowest line that appears when you make a tone should be inside or above the narrow band between 220 and 175 hertz. Hi, this is Andrea. I am showing you what my voice looks like on our spectrogram program for our newest volume of Finding Your Female Voice. If you look on the screen, uh, what this is is a representation of a free software program that we're recommending everybody use. Uh, what it does is it actually shows what your voice looks like as you're speaking. Um, I'm going to go through the very basic parts of each of it and then uh, sort of do some exercises so you can see what's going on. In fact, we're going to go through the entire audio CD at the end. Up at the top, you'll notice that there's a white line. What that is, is basically your volume. If you go too loud, it's going to go so that it goes to the top and the bottom of that area. And we actually don't want that. You want to have your microphone so that it doesn't go like this. Ha! Do you see how solid that got? We don't want that. We want it to be sort of in that middle area. We don't want it much louder than this right here. So figure out how close you need to have your microphone and how loudly you can speak. Because what happens is if it gets too far up, it's going to be distorted. And it's going to make a difference on these blue parts, which I'm going to speak about next. Um, when you're speaking in a voice, uh, there are several overtones. It's not just one tone that you hear. And this actually represents all the different tones that you'll hear. The one that we're most interested in, in terms of your basic pitch, is going to be approximately around where you see these two red lines at the bottom. We've added these so that you can sort of see what a typical female range should be. The bottom one is uh, 175 and the top is 220 hertz. And as I'm speaking, you can see that there's a line that sort of stays between there. And that's my F0. That's my basic pitch. Now, when I, when I sort of sing, you're going to see that it changes the way this looks. These other ones are all of my overtones. And I'm going to sort of show you just so you can see. Uh, now you'll notice when I sang that note, you see how I got all these straight lines across and how it's different than when I'm speaking. What you want to do is have the lowest of those solid lines be, you know, either between or above those red lines. So. Let me do a couple of other things to sort of show you how this works. There's a difference between how you speak and how you sing, which is why singing along to the radio isn't really the best way to learn how to really find your female voice. What you want to do is have your voice be breathed more than, more than sung. Here's the difference. I'll just sort of show you. When you sing, you have a very bell-like quality to your voice, like this. Ah. Uh... But what we want is, ha. Do you see the difference between how it looks when I sang it versus when I breathed it? See all that static? That's actually a good thing in this case. We want it to have that because 
That's what gives your voice that smoothness. For instance, right now when I'm speaking, you can see how my voice has various ups and downs. But when I start to speak like this, and I get some whisperiness to it, and it gets a little softer, do you see how down at the bottom I get all of this extra static and how there's some additional static up here? That's really important. We want that at first because you want to overcorrect towards that. The reason we want to do that is because when you're breathing like that, you can't have your vocal cords touch and make sort of a croaky sound like this. You can't go, ah, because the air forces your vocal cords to stay away from each other so they can't touch. So we want to be the difference between, ah, and, ah. You want to be pushing that air through like we talked in some of the earlier exercises. So that's the basic way that this works. I want to kind of show you some things so that you can see how to adjust on the fly. Watch when I speak a little too low. Uh, do you see how when I slid, how the, the bars actually sort of slid down a little bit with my tone? That's what you want to watch out for. It's very common when people are speaking to start off a sentence sounding great, but by the end, because they're running out of breath, and because they're not paying as much attention, their, their voice tends to drop a little bit. So we want to be mindful of that and not have that happen when we're, when we're working on our voice. So it's really great if you can have this open and looking at it while you're watching the video, if you have both a television and a computer that you can watch at the same time. So having said all that, I just want to do a couple of quick things um, before we get started on the actual lessons. And then at the end, I'm actually going to tack on some additional things with um, a group of sentences called the Harvard Sentences to show you how to do them. Um, but the, the last thing I want to do before I get you started on actually using this yourself is I want you to just sort of watch what happens when I'm speaking in a very sort of flat monotone. When I sort of speak like this, do you see how my voice just sort of stays in one place and it doesn't really go up and down? that's going to sound a little more masculine to people than if you have a little bit of up and down like this and your voice is going up and it's going down as well. And that takes some time to get to where you can have these ups and downs versus that flat that we saw earlier. So I want you to sort of think about that as we move forward. But for now, we're just going to go through the audio. And if you can do repeat after me sort of exercises and try to match what you see on the screen with what you see on the spectrogram. The next thing I'm going to go through are the Harvard sentences. Now these are just a group of sentences that allow you to uh, practice different phonetic combinations. So it's got all of the sort of consonant and vowel con combinations in it. And it's just a great way to sort of figure out where your specific needs are. Uh, everybody does vowels differently and as you can see on the screen, watch what happens when I do different vowels. A, E, I, O, U, A. You see how each one, even though my pitch was exactly the same, looks different on the screen. You have to be mindful when you're doing your vowels that everybody, depending on what part of the country you live in or what your dialect is, um, that's going to make a difference in how you form your vowels. And the reason we practice with A, uh, is the same reason that uh, a dentist makes you say it at his office or her office is because you are forced to open your mouth or your throat as far as you can and it forces you to push that air through. So um, as we do these Harvard sentences, I want you to sort of repeat after me. Ready? We're going to start with list one and I'm just going to go through them and I'll leave time for you to repeat. Okay, I'm going to read each sentence twice in a row. The first time through, I want you to sort of listen for the end word. What I want you to do is go up on the end word, like I just did at the end of this sentence. What that does is it helps you keep your pitch up at the end of sentences. A lot of people tend to start off, 
they'll be speaking up like this and it'll sound really good and as they go along it starts to get lower and if you look on the screen you see how it starts to get lower and lower and then finally they're down a little too far. We don't want that. We want to sort of keep it up in between the red bars or higher and one of the ways that you can really help that at the end of your sentences is by going up. So the second time through on each sentence I'm going to emphasize a different word and it's really important what tends to happen with some people is when they go up on a word like that you see up on a word did you see how it goes up they they tend to overshoot on the way back down so one lesson that that we can do before we get in these sentences is to slide up octaves and slide down octaves so let me just kind of show you what I mean first this is the difference an octave would be like the first two notes of somewhere over the rainbow so uh, those are octaves. Now, do you see how they look different on the screen? See how there's not as many overtones? It's because I'm up in my falsetto when I go up in octaves, so it loses some of those, those overtones. But what I want you to do, once you can go, is to slide between the two like this. And see how that looks on the screen? Try it again with me. Ready? Now here's a tricky one. I want to go back down, and this is where people tend to have problems. Watch this. A lot of people will sort of go like this. And you see that sort of bobble? Did you hear it? I'll do it again. That's because I'm switching between my registers. And it's easy, if you're not used to it, to lose control of your voice right at that point. It's kind of like when your voice changes and switches registers. How you can get that kind of like sound like this in your voice where you're actually between two registers and obviously it doesn't look too pretty on the screen and it doesn't sound too pretty either. So we want to try to get to where we can smoothly switch between registers so we can dip up into our falsetto and then come back down. So ah, let's try that again. really breathy at the end. So, ah. Once you feel comfortable with that, I want you to try to shorten that up like this. Ah. 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 You sure you don't go like this? Ah. See how that dips down right before I come back up? Ah, that's a common problem. And that's one of the big issues with sliding back down from our falsetto is a lot of people will sort of overshoot and then their pitch will stay low for the rest of the sentence. And that's what we're going to try to avoid when we go through these um, for the Harvard sentences. Um, so try that little warm up, you know, on your own that ah. Uh, just like that. And once you feel like you've got that under control, it's really going to help you with your conversational abilities. So, list one. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often served in round bowls. The juice of lemons makes fine punch.
The box was thrown beside the parked truck. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Four hours of steady work faced us. Large size in stockings is hard to sell. Okay, on list number two, I'm going to read each sentence twice in a row. The first time through, I want you to sort of listen for the end word. What I want you to do is go up on the end word, like I just did at the end of this sentence. The boy was there when the sun rose. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Kick the ball straight and follow through. Kick the ball straight and follow through. Help the woman get back on her feet. Help the woman get back to her feet. A pot of tea helps to pass the evening. A pot of tea helps to pass the evening. Smoky fires lack flame and heat. Smoky fires lack flame and heat. The soft cushion broke the man's fall. The soft cushion broke the man's fall. The salt breeze came across from the sea. The salt breeze came across from the sea. The girl at the booth sold 50 bonds. The girl at the booth sold 50 bonds. Great. Now let me stop you right there. I want you to take a look at the screen and sort of see if your voice dipped down at any points below the red lines on the, on the monitor. If it did, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that I want you to be mindful of. And that's very common when you're first starting to converse. So those are the kind of things to be mindful of. You may have also noticed that as you were speaking, you were doing fine at first, and as you kept going, it started to drop down more and more like this until it started to get a little below the line like this, or maybe it started to get a little croaky like this. Do you see, do you see what it looks like when I do a croaky voice where I'm trying to conserve air versus really pushing some air through and giving it that fullness that we want? If you have the fullness that we want, it's gonna show up down here. Watch what happens. Right now I'm just sort of speaking in my regular voice and you don't see very much going on below the red line. But this is the voice that I use when I want to project or when I'm sort of doing, you know, work related things. But watch what happens when I start to get a little more air pushed through. I sound to you a little more sincere. It sounds perhaps what our society considers a little more feminine. It might even sound a little bit sultry, but you'll see that 
you start to get a little bit more stuff down underneath the red line versus when I'm doing this. Now see, it's kind of gone away. It's, it's really not there anymore. You want to kind of get some of that in there. You want to find that balance. That's one of the real fine-tuning tricks to all this. So keep that in mind as you're speaking. The next thing I really want you to do is find someone who you can practice with on a one-on-one -on -one conversational sort of thing. Ideally, you would do that with the spectrogram in front of you as you're speaking. What you're going to find is that there's times when you start to slip a little bit. One of the most common things that happens with uh, people I work with on voice stuff is their tendency to use filler words. What is a filler word? A filler word is when you feel like you're trying to think of the next word you want to say and you stick in a word to fill in the silence as you're thinking of that word. One of the most common ones that you hear is um. So a lot of people, when they're talking, instead of taking a breath, they'll be going, well, um, yeah, I guess I went down to the um, store and I am... Um, and you see what happens when I do those ums is, in my case, you know, I'm, I'm able to sort of keep them in the range I want, but what I'm doing is I'm wasting breath when I'm doing that. That's time that I could be breathing in instead of blowing out air, going um. So if you can get rid of filler words in your sentence, even just one in each sentence, that'll give you time to get another breath and, and support your, your voice a little bit more. Uh, the, the main thing that you have to be careful of is a lot of people do their filler words a lot lower than they speak. So they'll be going along saying, yeah, I went to the store and um, then I went down to um, and you see how it's starting to get a little too low right here? We, we don't want it to get much below that line. That, that bottom line is really considered sort of the threshold of the difference between male and female voices. You know, if you put a bunch of people in a room and made them listen to a recording, if the voice was below that line, they're probably going to consider that voice male. And it's not a hard and fast rule. There are plenty of women. You know, there's a lot of radio DJs. There's a couple of sultry voiced actresses who have lower voices than that. But their, their resonance up here is a lot different. So the best thing you can do is just try to get your pitch, you know, within that range. And that way it's just not something you'll have to worry about. Um, it's not possible for everyone, but it's something you should at least give a shot. Now, once you've found your friend and you're doing your conversations, you may see points where your voice dips down. And if that happens, just stop and, you know, tell your friend beforehand that, that you want to practice your voice, you know, and they should be fine. And just stop and just try that little section again if, if something happens like that. But it's absolutely critical now that you've listened to this whole thing, to do as much practice as you can in conversational sorts of things. If you've ever taken a foreign language, you know it's very different to speak it in a classroom or to repeat after the teacher versus being out on the street talking to somebody and trying to get directions or, or you know, bartering on an on a object or something at a store. Those are, those are very different kinds of speaking and this sort of you know, rigid format of these lessons is really important so you can learn how to isolate the elements of your voice. But we're now at the point where you need to put all that together. And I wish you the best as you go out and converse with people. If you find yourself needing someone to converse with, uh, as you know, uh, I give voice lessons and I'm always happy to work with you if you think that would be useful. Usually um, people do a quick first session of 15 minutes or so where I sort of analyze what their special needs are and then after that I send them off with some homework. They do another 15 minutes and if they feel like it they might do more but for some people you know just a half an hour is enough to sort of get a general sense. So I hope that you can get it just from this video you know that's why we put it together but if you're feeling like you're not sure or you just want to check in or need a little help feel free to check in. Here is a uh, email address that you can look up and a website with some information. So thanks again for uh, putting up with my voice through all this. I'm sure you're tired of hearing it by now, but with luck, um, this will lead to a new voice for you.